Welcome, this is Tamara from Pink Passive Income, and today I'm going to set up my weekly plan and check-in and show you exactly how I start the week and how I also close out the week. From the moment that I wake up, put on my makeup, you are right there with me. Doesn't matter what I go through, you're my breakthrough, you know what For those of you who are new to the channel, I live on a monthly fixed income mom of three and someone who is always seeking additional ways to generate income i'm on a journey to become debt free and break the cycles of bad spending habits to generate wealth so i can live a life of freedom and hopefully pass that down to some future generations for those of you who are interested in that i would love for you to be a part of this community please hit the like and subscribe button and let's jump in so this is I wanted to show you kind of the closeout of the week, but this is what my weekly plan looks like um, when I'm budgeting. So I've already did a couple of videos on how I set up um, my budget and how this really is my main page for budgeting. Um, but I do check in daily, which I use my uh, envelopes to check in daily, and we're going to do that today while we're doing the weekly closeout because I have receipts in here that I need to record and I also need to put these in fetch. And again, if you don't know what fetch is, fetch will get you cash back rewards. Like you can get gift cards, you can get uh, different items that you need if you just scan in your receipts. And since I use the cashless method for um, my um, envelopes, for my envelope budgeting, I don't use cash envelopes, I use cashless. And I also use prop money for my sinking funds, which I did a video on, but I'll continue to do videos on that. So the first thing I'll do is what I like to do is I like to fill in this column right here. And this column right here says, okay, what was your budget supposed to be? So this is now close out. If you look at the way I started my week, the way I started it was just to First of all, take uh, one of my sticky sheets like this. I print out a lot of these, and this is on a sticker back. So once you peel that yellow off, this comes off. But I like to cut this out and arrange it on my spread in my journal the way I want it. And I do this for every week. So there should be about four each for each week. And I go ahead and date it. I put what is my to-do list for the week in there, so I give it a good overview. And remember... All of this is a living document, you know, you sometimes you have to come back and put, okay, well, this came up, I have to do this, or I have to do this, or some things you didn't, you didn't get to at all. So what I like to do if I didn't get to that item is I like to go ahead and move that over to next week's reminder. So I know I did the, I mailed my tax forms. I know I filed some court documents. I know that I did not sign up for my real estate post license training. So I'm a, a licensed real estate agent in Georgia and I'm owed, uh, I have to turn in some post license training, which I need to go ahead and sign up for and, and start doing and knocking that out before I start school next month. So I go back to school for my master's, which a lot of people out there in school for their, um, for their degrees, but I have to get this done before that because I don't think I could do them both at the same time. I did have my appointment and then I did go to the gym, but I did not go consistently. So I'm going to make sure that I pay attention to that. And as far as my water, this is also my water and green juice intake. I definitely could do better. You know, I definitely can do better. So let's start by listing those private. These are the problem areas I like to talk about. You know, I've said this before in my, my other videos. This area right here, so I have my uh, fixed regular expenses. They come out no matter what. This is what has to come out. I have to have this uh, every month to survive. And this right here is my leisurely expenses. I don't have to have any of this. I don't have to have it. I just find that it makes the journey of saving now going into a debt-free journey, which I start next month, it makes it not so miserable to make sure that I pay myself for these areas. But if anything were to happen, this would be the first area to be cut back. And this right here is my sinking funds. And for sinking funds, I feel like that is a necessity. That these are, these are uh, expenses that you know are coming. 
you need to get ready or it will just bust your budget all up. And I've done it without sinking funds and I could not go back to not saving for sinking funds, which I use for uh, prop money. So I take this and I transfer it in one transfer uh, at the uh, one payday into my high yield savings account. And I separate it by category in my envelopes for sinking funds using prop money. I do not use regular cash um, for that. And this is my debts. I will be working on getting rid of this completely starting next month. So let's start with groceries. And we're going to put down how much did I budget it for. And by week, we're at the end of week two. Where am I? Am I overspending? And I'm going to tell you, some of these are I am overspending. And that means I have to pick up a side gig to go and figure out how to make sure I don't go over budget for the rest of the month. Or make sure that one of the other categories, like I've already decided I'm not getting my hair done this month. I'm not getting my nails repainted because I get them gel uh, nailed every, just gel polish every month. I'm not getting that done um, because I've went over with some of these other expenses. So for groceries, I allotted myself $400. So I'm going to put $400 here. For gas, I've allotted myself $300. And remember, I have a side gig as Uber. I'm an Uber driver as my side gig. And I do suggest everybody come up with a side gig because it's very hard to change your situation if you're looking for a change. If you're, if you're okay with the way things are going and you just maybe want to tie up some ends, but if you're trying to make a change, like you're trying to either catch up on bills, you're trying to uh, uh, get your finances in order, I would say that a, a side gig, picking one is a necessity. And I have two that I consistently do. I do Uber and I also do Airbnb. So when I'm not in my house or I have to vi uh, travel for something, I Airbnb my home out and that is extra money for me. Um, but everybody has their different um, side gigs. So dining out, I gave myself $200, which I know I've already busted that budget. And it's um, because it's the summer for my kids. I don't know if anybody else feels this way. When your kids are out in the summer, it is a lot harder to keep to your budget because you have to come up with entertainment. You're spending more on groceries. You're spending more with whoops. Oh, well, we're going to eat because I didn't take this out. It's a lot harder um, in the summer. But um, for personal or pocket money, I gave myself 130, which I normally don't, but I had some um, transcripts I had to pay for, and I just went ahead and allotted the money for my transcripts to my personal um, pocket money. And pocket money, that is my catch all envelope. That's the envelope where if I didn't know like I need to be budgeting for that or something that showed up, or even if it's overage for something else, I usually go right to my personal pocket money and take it out. So family fun is 200, which we have a um, Hershey's trip coming up, Hershey's park trip coming up. And I've been Uber and Uber and Uber away <laughs> trying to get ready for that trip. Um, I have about $250 right now saved for that. Um, but I need about $300, $400 for that trip. So entertainment, um, 100 Clothing, I gave myself 100 Supplies, I gave myself 60 Shopping, I gave myself 300 for Amazon, which I'm getting ready to go on a low spend month, and I'm going to completely cut out Amazon because Amazon is my Achilles heel. And then for beauty, which I did not use any for me or my daughter, we did not get our hair braided. We know we get our hair braided and our nails and toes done every month, once a month. I didn't use any of that, and I'm proud of myself. We just sticking it out and doing our own thing this month. We are not spending, uh, she's not getting her hair braided, which I have 11 year old. And I usually get my hair um, crochet braided um, just to keep maintenance down. And I get my nails um, painted. I don't get a manicure. And I get a pedicure. And normally that's somewhere around 280 And I use the rest for like tips or getting hair or stuff like that. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're not doing that this month. I already figured out I have to get rid of uh, wanting to do that this month because some other things took priority. 
So 300 for beauty, which I, I'm going to cut down. I have a plan to figure out how to cut down on that by doing some things every other month. Like, you know, maybe my nails one month, my pedicure the other, the next month. I got to figure it out, but I got to cut that down. And then parking or, you know, the metro, or I look at that as if I have to catch an Uber for anything, I give myself $50 for um, tra local transportation. And for my pet, I have a cat. He gets $20, which he's already kind of spent. And I have these two are, they what they're called is surprise co cost. So I'm gonna try to bring this in just a little bit more so we can go ahead and fill this out. All right. Now, the next thing I do is I go to my um, cashless envelopes and I go ahead and I input anything that I have not inputted and I check my account to make sure there's nothing that I've skipped as far as this. So I already know I went grocery shopping. I went grocery shopping today. I give myself $100 for groceries and I spent $96.65. And I'll tell you that I used to overspend on groceries until I started using Instacart as my shopping list. So literally, I open the Instacart app, I go to Aldi's, I put into the cart what I want for that week, I let it come up to the amount that it's supposed to come up, which it came up uh, about $99 or so, and then I go in the store and I shop from that cart and I stick to that cart, and I never go over budget since I started doing that. But what I have noticed is that First of all, the items that you get in Instacart, all those items are going to be more. So they tack on little um, increments to each item that you purchase on Instacart. So if you didn't know that, you are really paying for, uh, for the convenience. So you're paying for the service fee and whatever, the delivery fee. And then they also up the prices of the individual items on there. So whenever I go in there, I always come under. I come under what it says in my Instacart. And sometimes I'll just grab something that wasn't on my list and I still am under budget. So I hope that helps somebody because somebody told me on YouTube how to do this and I can't remember which YouTuber. If I can remember which YouTuber gave me that tip or put that tip out there, I really would um, like to thank them. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and um, before I annotate this, I'm going to go ahead and put it in fetch. So I'm going to open and this is my old cell phone app booted this up just so I could show you how fetch works. So this is fetch. This is what the interface looks like. And all you do is you go down to the camera right here and you go to the camera again right there and say it wants to get access. Say okay. And you hover it over. It's giving me a little uh, tutorial. But you hover it over um, your receipt like that. And you snap it. Now I'm not done because I didn't get the whole thing in the picture. So I'm going to snap the bottom part like that. Okay. Now when you snap that, you see that orange circle that just came up. All you're going to do is take your finger, press on the camera, and drag it into that orange circle like that. All right. All right, and I'm at that was 25. So any receipt that you you can you can scan literally any receipt. There is no receipt that you cannot scan. You scan parking receipts, any any type of receipt is going to give you a minimum of 25 points. And I'm over, I'm up to since last month. So I started with my fetch last month, and I'm up to and it doesn't show. It usually shows it. Let me see if I can see. Yeah, I'm up to 3,870 points. And why that's significant is because every thousand point is one dollar. So once you get to five thousand points or so, you can cash it out with a five dollar uh, gift certificate or gift card. And so I plan on just letting those add up until the end of the year and then using some of those as just Christmas gifts or to make some of my bills a little uh, less. So. All right. And then I come back and I this is, again, my weekly closeout. I go ahead and I just cross this out because I want I want to remind myself that I put that into fetch, okay? Now, I have to record this because 
Again, I'm using a cashless system for my, my um, budget envelopes. So I know that I went grocery shopping, you know, really yesterday, just put the 14th. I always go on a, a Sunday or a Saturday, 14th. And then that's Aldi's. I really stick to Aldi because I know I've tried other grocery stores and I spend a lot more in groceries. It's just crazy how much more groceries are, depending on where you go. And I put that I spent $96. Now this $104.25, I spent over that because I actually had a little bit of money left over from the last time I went shopping. And so I just used it. So I didn't really go over, I just had a little extra money left. All right, 65. Now what you do is you add both of those up. You can do it however you want to do it, but you can subtract it from the 295 to give you a new balance. And you'll add both of those to get your um, weekly balance. So we got um, 295.75 um, minus 96.65, okay? And some of y'all could do math in your head. I've never been a math person. So even a little little math, I have to do, I do it either on a spreadsheet in Excel or I use a calculator. Now, that tells me, oh, that I have 199. I left a nine out, but 199. And what? let me see if I have my, let me use my white out with this. And you have to, I have to keep white out because I'm always making mistakes. Always making mistakes. All right, 199. I'm gonna set that to the side because I might need it again. 199.10 and 10 cent. Now, what I'm gonna do for my closeout, I know it's a lot of moving uh, pieces, is that when I'm done doing my next receipt, I'm gonna add up how much I've spent so far and put that on my weekly closeout. So let's do the last receipt I did for any kind of food shopping. And this was, um, I don't even like counting these because this is uh, when I went to Amazon Fresh, I was waiting to charge, I have an electric car, I was waiting to charge the car and I had a tip. So from um, sometimes at Uber, people give you cash tips. So I had a $6 tip and I decided to sit and have something from the salad bar with that tip. And even though I'm gonna record it, I really didn't spend this out of my budget, but I am gonna record it and I am gonna put it in fetch. Okay, so seven, 14, Amazon, fresh, and I spent $5.92, because I had literally had, 90, uh, had $6, which they didn't take cash. I can't stand that when you have places that don't take cash at all, because some people still use cash. I just, I wouldn't have had uh, cash, but I had a tip. I had a cash tip, so I ended up having to take it out of my um, account you know, swipe my card for it, but I got to put the $6 back in my account for it. $92, 92 cent, okay? Now, we're at 199.10 uh, minus 5.92 equals, so I'm down to 193, which not really, because I have more than that. I have 200 left, but 193.18, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and do this last one in my fetch. I'm going to show you fetch again and see if 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 you if you can uh tell how to do it. It's real easy. I don't know if you need to know how to do it, but I'm going to show you. So here's my receipt for fetch. I'm just going to hover it over it. I like to snap as much of it as I can. And then it, it, I don't know why it kind of, um, let me see. I'm going to see if it'll take it, but it might not because I didn't snap the whole thing. Yeah, it did. It took it. So this is probably going to be 25, 25 points as well. You see that? Oh, it's actually 300 points. And there's something I, I bought that was a bonus. So I have 300 points for that, which is a nice surprise. It depends on what you, you know, what you're snapping because they always have these bonus deals that if certain products you snap a receipt for, it gives you extra bonus. So that's nice that I have an extra bonus 
of 300. I was only expecting 25 points. So, all right. And my points, again, are up to 4,170. I can almost cash this out for a $5 gift certificate or gift card. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put my receipts in here. And they've already been marked because I've done them on Fetch. And this is why I don't do it right then on the spot because it's not always quick. So I don't record right then on the spot. I just put it in the front of my wallet and then I come and record it later. I usually do it. This is my daily check-in. I usually try to do this every day or every other day, okay? Now, where am I with, with food? So I'm going to add up this column right here to show what I've spent for food. So I've spent 104 um, or I could do this or I, either you could do either way. You can add this column up or you can subtract what your balance is from the uh, 400 to see what you've spent so far. And I think I'm going to do that because it's easier. So 400 minus 193.18 equals 206.82. That's what I've spent so far. 206.82. OK, and so we're looking at my check in. My weekly check-in, and this is what it is. It's, I've spent for groceries so far 206, which that kind of looks over, but like I said, I had some extra 82. And is it over? Yeah, it is. It is kind of over. You know, I'm six off from the point I'm at now because I have uh, two $100 bills left for um, getting groceries. I'm a little bit over, but I'm not worried about it. You know, I'm not worried about that at all. So that's my closeout for groceries for the week, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and put my um, budget sheet back, and I'm going to move to the next to the next um, envelope. So this, I'm going to tell you guys, okay? I have recently, I am trying to sell my car um, because that's going to be the first thing I get rid of um, for, or the first thing I attempt to get rid of for my debt reduction. And I want an electric car. I'm actually in a rental electric now, which I do through, use through Uber, which you have to work your, your, um, your electric car payment off through Uber. And I don't mind doing that because whatever I make over that, um, I keep. So it takes me about three and a half days to pay for the electric car. And then anything I make for the rest of the week, I keep. And that's good for me because it's not my primary income, right? But what I have discovered is that it is a lot cheaper to charge your car if you have an electric car versus buying gas. I'm sure that people knew that. I did not know that. It totally has opened my eyes to why aren't why aren't I looking at electric cars? A lot of people say, well, it's hard to charge them. I have not experienced that. I have not experienced where there's a hard time. You have a hard time finding the charger. I'm going to go a step further. I have just discovered that there are free electronic electric car charging, charging spaces out there. I've been paying and the average cost for me to charge my battery 100% is around $22 or so. And I can go for about three days. That's Ubering, right? If I didn't have to Uber, I believe that will last me about a week and a half, somewhere around there. But get this, even less than that, I found free chargers and I didn't even know they existed. I went to the movies this week. We went to the movies and I was with someone and they pointed out a free charger at the movies. I didn't even know it was free. It was always busy, but it's free. And what I'm going to try and attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to start to use the free chargers, even if that means I'm getting up early, like going to the gym, you know, parking there, doing my cardio, you know, my cardio walk or something while it's charging. And I'm going to attempt to freely charge my um, car so I can save that expense because look where I'm at. So let's do it. Let's look up because I know I've charged my car since then a couple of times. Let's look. Let's see, And I have to, only thing that I don't like about, um, I might not be, I might not be able to look at it right now because I'm using my phone to, um, film, but I will come back and do this. But 
what I'm going to say is that this cost right here, if this can completely go away, I'm already around $300. Let's just see. I'm already, because this was one of my problem areas. And not that it's a real problem because guess what? Me Ubering does take care of my gas. I still budget against my gas so I know what I'm spending in gas. But once you Uber, you're 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 paying for your gas out of your um, proceeds. So I'm gonna do I'm just gonna add this up. This 20 plus 2163 plus 509 plus 22 55 plus 19 10 plus 22.08 plus 27.32 35 equals so 186 that's where i'm at i'm at i've spent 186 so far and if you look that's really over my budget so far so if i just put down hey i want to annotate right here which i will and i'll come back and erase it i want to annotate that i've spent 186 so far and that's not even all i have to go into my my app because the only thing i don't like about the chargers is that they don't really give you receipts. You have to look on your debit. It'll give you an estimate of what it's going to charge you, but you don't know exactly until you're done and it, it they don't spit out any type of receipt or anything like that unless you use the app. And what I found is that when you use their apps, I don't know why they charge more. And people say, oh, it's less if you use the app. I haven't had that experience. When I just go up and swipe my card on the um, the electronic um, charger, it's less than if I were to go in the app. But the app will give you a receipt. Um, but so I've just been swiping at the um, at the EV Go um, at the like either a grocery store. I have one in walking distance. I literally have um, a shopping center in walking distance. So I just walk over there and charge it. And I don't know what else you, if you anybody else knew this, but the Earlier in the day or the later in the day you charge, they give you a discount. So if you're charging during peak hours, it's full price. It's like, you know, I don't know, 50 cent wattage. I don't know how you calculate that, but it's full price. But if you charge off peak, it's like it comes down to like 41, 43 cent. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, I'm going to come back because I have to go into my account when I'm off uh, camera and I have to get the final two charges that I did for the week and then go ahead and update my um, closeout. All right. Same thing with Amazon hair or a beauty. All I did really was I, I bought hair for my for next month because I don't plan on getting my hair done this month. So my hair cost. Uh, this is for Beauty, it costs $42.39. Am I worried about where I am? No, I'm not worried about where I'm at, at with that. Matter of fact, that's going to save me because I had a terrible bill I'll tell you about at the end show up. And it's just horrible how people take your money from you as soon as you make it. That is the world we live in. I don't care what anybody say. As soon as you make money, there's somebody with their hand out to take it from you. $42.39. So I I have saved so far $257.61 on hair. And I'm really appreciating that. I'm taking those steps to do better with that. You know, everything doesn't happen overnight. You have to take baby steps. Okay, I do anyway. All right. So next one is clothing. And I for sure just bought... Um, some workout clothes, but it wasn't even where it was like underwear, like sports bras and stuff like that. Because I, I noticed that my hang up in the morning, even the night before was that I struggled putting together the pieces for my workout, like my workout outfit. And I went and got some basic underwear from Burlington Co, Co factory with the, um, sports bras. And I bought two new, uh, workouts, just, um, stretch pants and t-shirts. And that, that and I bought new socks, um, new socks. So that came to $69.90. So, so far I've spent and I've already scanned my receipt. See, I came in that evening and scanned it. You can see the X on it. All right. 
So all I'm going to do is I'm going to close out how much I've spent so far. So I have $24.99. I bought myself a new robe plus $69.90. And that equals, I spent out of my 100 so I'm done. I'm pretty much done spending on clothing. Out of my 100 I've spent $94.89. So I need to put in for clothing, I've spent $94.89. And I don't consider um, that an issue because I'm done. I'm not buying any more clothes this month. I know I'm not. Uh, and that's just it about that. So minus $94.89. Okay. $5.11. All right. $5.11 is my... I'm not over, but that's what's left, okay? Now, let's go on to the next one. I don't have any more um, receipts that I need to scan in for fetch. That's the only thing is that my gas receipt, so I can no longer scan, which I don't like, because I used to have a lot of gas receipts, because electrics don't give you receipts. This is where I don't know if I messed up, and I'll explain I don't know. So, at the end of last month, I had made Uber money and I decided to go out for brunch at a new restaurant that was a really good brunch restaurant, um, had good reviews. And I spent, which I don't appreciate, <laughs> the bill from that brunch was $92.50. This is why I think people have totally stopped going out because why does it cost $92.50? That was for one person. That wasn't for all. That was for one person in a restaurant for brunch. And so the thing is, I counted that because I like to track what I do, but I had made that money in Uber. It was the end of the month. I did it at the final day. I had paid everything I need to pay. Um, and I made an extra $100 because uh, I make about $100 a day on Uber. And that's that's because I don't Uber all day. you know. <laughs> but I decided to take myself out to brunch and treat myself. And you know what? It didn't even feel like a treat because the bill was so high from it. So I counted that even though this really didn't come out of my budget, but I still count it because you need to see where is, where's your money going? Because I could have used some of that money. I could have found something better to do with that money, honestly, than to have one hour that of my life that cost me $92.50 when it took me all day to make $100. Does that make sense? Like it takes you all day to make something. You could spend it in like what? A few minutes. <laughs> So this, I know my dining looks terrible and we're done. We're not done dining because I'm getting ready to go to Hershey's, but I'm making that money for Hershey's from Uber and like I'm making sure that Uber money for uh, Hershey's. So let's see how bad it is. It, it is bad so far. I got to add it up because I'm already at negative $14.90. Let's see how much I spent. Let's go 200. Let's go, wait, let's go add these up. 92. Two dot fifty plus fifty dot I think that's sixty seven sixty seven plus fifty seven dot sixty three plus uh fourteen dot ten and I'm a minus uh two hundred. Yep, and that's why I'm why I'm at fourteen. But I've spent um approximately the two hundred dollars, two hundred and fourteen dollars and ninety cent. But I need to just add that on here because this is you know this is life. This is what it is. I'm I'm only halfway through the month and I'm already over my dining budget. But I'm not too hard on myself because like I said, one of those meals was that process the next day which was the first of the month i had spent that the day before because i made some extra money on uber but it shows me that i don't necessarily want to spend my money on eating out i don't i really don't i do it for my kids it's an easy way for us to do something as entertainment but i'm over spending you know that kind of money on forget it you know on uh uber eats or um that other pickup app you you spending 80 to 90 to $100 to get your food. It's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. That's my whole week's grocery budget. But anyway, all right, let's go to dining out. I've spent, I gotta find, yeah, I've spent $214.90 and I'm negative $214.90. 
fourteen dollars and ninety cent okay so that's a area of concern because it's not even done i know i'm going to eat out more this month um because we have a planned trip but i have been slowly saving money in this little envelope right here because every time i make money towards my trip uh for um hershey park i immediately take it out of my account and i put it here because i don't even want it to count against anything in my account so anyway what's next so my next one my next one and this video is going to be long so i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop the video i'm going to finish these because there's nothing different about what's left in my envelopes than what i've showed you already to so i don't make the video so long and i'll come back as soon as i'm done okay so i'm back i have completely went through and i'll show you i don't have any receipts to put away i've annotated everything in my envelopes my cashless envelopes i have scanned all of my receipts and fetched for my closeout for this week and me doing this process makes the end of the month close out really quick so if you do this once a week i like to just do it on sunday sit in the bed i'm filming now but i usually sit in the bed and just do this but i'll start sharing this on film um your end of the month closeout is really quick if you just do this so if you come over here what i've highlighted is i've highlighted any areas in blue where i've went over there is no going back you're over that budget so you're going to have to pay attention to where that money is going to come from to cover that overage. And if you continue to go over, you still have to worry about where's that money coming from. And a lot of times that's where I just pick up my side, my side hustles. I pick it, pick the intensity up of my side hustles. And the yellows are where I can already see that it's a possibility I'm going to go over. So um, I'm not going to say that in groceries. I just highlighted it because I'm a little over so far. Um, and then gas is a big one. But remember, I told you I figured out that I can charge my car for free in certain places. They're just not advertised. And I'm going to try to pull back my gas bill because I'm halfway through the month and I've allotted myself $300 of gas. And I've already spent $215.99 when I really should be around $150. I should be one around $150. And that overage looks like I've spent about a week's worth so far up overage but that's what i'm going to do i'm going to take get this caught up by charging um at a chart a free charging station i'm gonna see how that works um went over on dining we've already talked about that went over on my personal pocket money which i can foresee me probably going over a little bit more and clothing i'm not over but i i cannot spend any more i have five dollars and eleven cent and this is the bill that I told you made me sick. Literally, I couldn't function that day. So I'm in a rental car and I got the rental insurance after they initially offered it. So at first, I didn't really want to get it because it was very high. At the amount they wanted was higher than what I anticipated. So I said, let me work a little bit and I'll come back and get it. Now, I did come back and get it, and the car later on had a rock hit the lower back, lower window, windshield window. It made a crack about this this big and i reported it but by that time i had insurance but because they could not prove and i could not prove that that crack in the windshield that was about this long happened after i acquired it they're charging me for it 477 dollars. it made me so sick to my stomach i was so angry but i all I could do was take this as a lesson. When you get the rental cars, just go ahead and get the overage insurance. It's six dollars and ninety nine cent. Um, yeah, I could go ahead and charge this to my insurance and just use uh, my deduct, but my deductible is about the same amount. You see what I'm saying? So I have to take this out of my sinking funds. So I have sinking funds money um, that covers um, car maintenance. And some other things and i'm going to find it and take it out of that but it made me so sick because now i'm set back almost 500 dollars um because really the rental cars or uh, companies are just greedy and you have to protect yourself so i need to move on because i've already made peace with that i've already had my time and made peace with that so what i like to do is just come over here under weekly reminders for next week i need to lower the cost of my car currently i have my car up for sale on cars.com 
and I have to make uh, my hair appointment for next month. That'll make me feel better about not having it this month. At least I'll have it on the calendar for next month. Continue to plan my Hershey's trip because I feel like if you don't have a plan, that's where you spend money. And so I already have the plan on what we're paying for the tickets, what we're paying to eat, what we're paying to park, what we're paying to uh, to get there. Like I'm going to use try to use an electric charge, a free electric charge to get there. I need to go ahead and buy my books for the next quarter that's coming up for uh, George Washington University. And also, I need to order my post real estate license course, which I was supposed to order this month. And I allotted the money to order this month. But because I'm over, I might push this off to next month. I just haven't decided yet. I just haven't decided. And I like to still keep up that. What am I grateful for? So I can already say I'm grateful that I have the money to pay for the damage for Avis. So I'm grateful for my you know, my sinking funds. And I'm also grateful that I found out that you can charge your car for free. All right, so that completely closes out my week um, for check-in. And what I'm going to do right after this, and I'm not sure if I'll make a video on it, um, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to do my cutout for my next week. I'm going to go ahead and flip to a new page, cut this out, get it on here, and go ahead and list out what's happening for next week. And that's it. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.